Hey what is up guys and welcome to Star Wars Real Talk. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the characters that I think were done dirty by the Star Wars directors and writing staff. Now when I say done dirty, I mean they didn't get the spotlight they deserved or the characters were set up to be something greater than they were. Also I should mention this list doesn't include people who were done really well throughout the first six movies and then absolutely butchered in the last three movies like Luke or Leia or R2-D2. This list focuses on characters that were either set up and not finished, or just didn't get the justice they deserve. First on my list we have Finn. Finn was set up as a really interesting character in Episode 7. Uh, it was really refreshing to see someone who was within the Empire, or the First Order in this case, and rebelled against it from the inside. We'd never seen, I guess, what you'd call a traitor before. It was really thrilling to see him help Poe escape, and it was so exciting to think about what was going to happen to him and how he was going to influence the story. Here we have an ex-stormtrooper that could probably provide them with a ton of inside information, but that angle is never really used. It is a couple times but it's kind of more played off as a joke that he was in sanitary aka he was a janitor it was a wasted opportunity his character was set up to be really interesting he could have had a past that could have been explored within the first order he could have done more with his connections i really enjoyed that they were playing with the themes of like stormtroopers figuring out what's ethically and morally correct to do like kylo ren going to some town and just slaughtering people probably isn't ethically correct and it was nice to see someone just be like hey wait should we not be killing innocent unarmed civilians but i mean that's about all we got from him you could argue that he developed a force connection throughout the movies but that's really not explored it's really not talked about very much all of a sudden in episode 9 he's using the force to sense things they set him up in episode 7 to be able to wield the lightsaber and even goes as far as facing off against kylo ren uh, but they don't really do anything with it after that. It's just only there for Episode 7. But then they give him a Force connection in Episode 9. Rey is the Jedi hero. Poe is the hotshot gunner. Finn is the guy who's along for the ride. He just ends up serving the purpose of either comic relief or being that character that makes whatever crazy thing that's going on relatable from like a viewer standpoint. Sometimes you get so lost in the action that you forget how crazy it is without, you know, C-3PO going, oh my, dodging blaster fire, you realize, hey, this is actually a pretty dangerous scenario. And Finn's job just seems to serve that role. About a third of The Last Jedi was spent focusing on Finn and Rose Tico with the casino subplot. That much of the movie was spent focusing almost entirely on Finn and Rose, and nothing came from that. It was just entirely wasted screen time. Episode 8 did a pretty good job at developing Finn's passion for the Resistance and developing a, a deeper belief for what he wants to fight for. And they had a great opportunity in episode 8 when he was going to sacrifice himself to save the resistance. You know, even if he had sacrificed himself and saved the day, at least they could have done something great with this character in that movie. So what could have made Finn really cool in the Star Wars sequel trilogy? I don't know, maybe if they explored that angle about him being an ex-stormtrooper a little bit harder, maybe he starts rallying up other rebelling stormtroopers and he starts you know, campaigning against the Empire to question the morality of what they're doing. You know, Kylo Ren sending massive amounts of soldiers to just entirely wipe out planets so that he can fulfill some selfish mission is probably not a good idea. Maybe he could lead some ex-stormtrooper rebel army and they come in and save the day at the last minute. You know, Finn fulfilling his own role as a main character in a unique way that only he can do. Episode 9 had a massive opportunity to do exactly this. They even went as far as to finding a, you know, a group of ex-stormtroopers that Finn leads out on a charge on top of a Star Destroyer on horses. You know, the, the opportunity was there and they just never took it. They just made something stupid out of it. Horses riding on a ship. The ship could have just tilted 90 degrees and knocked them all off. They had an opportunity here to at least complete Finn's character arc and make something meaningful. It could have been emotional and a fulfilling conclusion to Finn's journey from Stormtrooper to leading a battle of ex-Stormtroopers against Stormtroopers. But what I do think they did well in Episode 8 was they kind of completed his transition from the First Order to the Resistance by having him face off against Phasma, who continually disrespected him, and it was nice to see him win that battle. Next on my list we have the Knights of Ren. The Knights of Ren were a group of people that I was very excited for. They were set up in Episode 7 and uh, it looked cool that Kylo had his own 
personal army, you know, a, a following of some kind. They all had matching armor and helmets, and they just straight up looked super badass. We had no idea what was going to happen from them. We just assumed they were going to be a major player in, you know, episode 8 or 9. And uh, they ended up not being a part of either of them, really. They kind of just stood around in episode 9, where they don't really do anything, and they just get their asses kicked by Kylo in the end of the movie. All they do is follow Rey around for most of the movie. They don't ever do anything. And then they end up following Kylo around near the end of the movie. They're completely forgotten about in Episode 8. Just just completely and entirely not in Episode 8 at all. I don't know what they were doing in that time. But in Episode 9, when they finally meet up with Kylo and they finally get their action scene, they're beating up Kylo. For some reason, they're not using their weapons. They're just roughing him up and teaching him a lesson until Kylo is able to conveniently get a lightsaber teleported into his hands, and then he just <laughs> he just slaughters them. I don't know. I was kind of hoping that they were at least going to have red lightsabers, not just, like, axes and other outdated medieval weapons. I don't know why this movie took such a hard angle on that medieval with the, with the horses on the Star Destroyer and trying to mix in the, the old with the new. It just really didn't work. And the Knights of Ren were a shining example of that, of how... You know, something old could have been done new and in a sci-fi way and contributed something to the sci-fi universe. But they were just, they were legit knights. Like, not like Jedi knights. They were just like knights that had armor and and blades. Would have been cool if they all had red lightsabers and they were like Sith knights or something we hadn't seen before. Like, like opposite of a Jedi order. Like some kind of, I don't know, some kind of Ren order. Like Kylo Ren, if this had been written a lot better than it had been, Kylo Ren could have been set up as the main villain by episode 9. I th it seemed like that's the way they wanted to go, but they needed to bring Palpatine back so that they could bring fans in to see the movie. But it would have been sick if, if the Knights of Ren ended up being like the secondary or supporting villain for Kylo Ren. Like in episode 8, when after Kylo Ren kills Snoke, and the uh, Snoke's red guards are all fighting them. That could have easily been the Knights of Ren fighting them. You know, there was no reason why it had to be those red guards. And then instead, you know, fine. The Knights of Ren don't need lightsabers. Give them those other weapons that can block lightsabers. You know, something that gives them that unique edge in combat. Honestly, I would have even been fine with them just being in Episode Eight, replacing the guards in that fight scene and not even have been in episode nine, you know, just something to set them up, give them a cooler, longer fight scene that actually feels fulfilling. Or I don't know if this is too much to ask, but you could at least let them talk. You know, what What do they think? Why do they follow Kylo Ren? What is their motivation for doing anything that they do? Are they with the First Order? Are they with Kylo Ren? When are they against Kylo Ren? When did, when did their motivations change? Can they... <laughs> Can they just say something? Can they use the Force too? We know that Kylo is wearing that helmet with the voice box because he's trying to emulate Darth Vader, but are they also trying to emulate Darth Vader? Or is he just the leader and they're all trying to copy him? Next up, we have Snoke. I really liked Snoke. I liked that we had a new villain, something new and refreshing. I liked that we hadn't seen him before. I liked that he wasn't Darth Vader or Palpatine. I liked that he was you know, a new Sith that maybe was not in the spotlight for the entirety of the Star Wars films. He could have been doing his own thing. I watched countless theories after Episode 7 trying to figure out who this guy was. There were so many Star Wars fans trying to piece together who this guy could be, what his motivations were, where was he for throughout the first six movies, how old is he, how has he been manipulating things up till now. Among the long list of things that Episode 8 did poorly, I really liked Snoke's philosophy that's introduced to us in Episode 8 about how he he's not so concerned about ruling the galaxy or, or anything like that. He's more interested in this concept of balancing good and evil. Like, he, he understands that you can't just be full dark side or full light side. He's trying to create this balance, and he's trying to use Rey and Kylo to do that. That was perhaps my favorite but temporary theme of the Star Wars sequel trilogy was this whole idea of the Force Dyad. And I want to talk about that more in another video. But then Kylo kills Snoke because Ryan Johnson was trying to continuously be unexpected and the theme of the Star Wars trilogy seems to just die out with him right then and there because it's not explored again in Episode 9. Snoke actually wasn't an original villain with original 
motivation and ideas and trying to take the destiny of the galaxy in a new never before explored direction he was just a, a clone of palpatine's the whole time so another character butchered next up on my list of characters that i liked and thought were done dirty we have hux general hux i thought was he really filled his role well in episode seven he, he did his job well he was a convincing power hungry villain who didn't even flinch to wipe out entire planets at once. He seemed to fill the role of a leader for the First Order pretty well. After Snoke was killed, I was kind of hoping that Hux was going to take over. Obviously, that's what Hux was wanting too. And uh, that's where the grudge that he begins to have with Kylo Ren c grows out of control to the point where in Episode Nine he just ends up becoming a spy and then is killed off in a scene of almost comic relief. I was kind of sad to see the way that he went out. Like, it made sense that he became a spy. Like, I don't I don't mind that. But they just didn't give him very much screen time. And I kind of wish that he had been the leader for the First Order. Even if he had become the main villain, I wouldn't have hated it. Because he was really good at his job. He didn't really need to be replaced in Episode Nine. I think he should have just taken that lead as the Supreme Leader. Because Kylo Ren should have <laughs> had no business being the Supreme Leader of the First Order. Like I mentioned in my Kylo Ren video... Kylo Ren just used the First Order to kind of fulfill all of his selfish desires and, and everyone just does what he, he says and there doesn't seem to be any general direction as to where Kylo Ren had planned on taking the First Order. He just had a bunch of shit he wanted to get done and he <laughs> happened to have an entire army to do it. Whereas I think Hux would have actually used the army for, I don't know, systematic domination like i'm not saying that he would have done good things with it he just would have done things that made more sense for someone as the supreme leader of the first order you know who else was done dirty captain phasma captain phasma initially just seemed to be a refreshing new image for stormtroopers because she had the full silver it was cool to see that there was a stormtrooper who was in charge of other stormtroopers it's usually some imperial officer someone without a helmet or any kind of armor it was cool to see a stormtrooper led by other stormtroopers i don't mind her role in episode seven like yeah she gets bested but that could have been fuel for her to get back and come back with an even stronger motivation for revenge or power or whatever it is she didn't get much of that in episode eight and she ended up dying off screen which i thought meant that she was going to be back in episode nine because that tends to be the rolling theme in movies these days if you don't see somebody actually die we can assume they're not dead palpatine survived a nuclear space blast yet phasma didn't survive falling into a hole there's one thing we've learned from star wars characters is that you can survive a, a fall into the deepest pit imaginable <laughs> so i don't i'm kind of disappointed phasma didn't come back or play a larger role she just ends up getting absolutely bitch made and that's just the end of it she could have been an iconic villain, but she just ends up being a laughable write-off character. And before I move on to the last person on the list, I feel that I should include, you could argue that Rey and Kylo didn't have very good character arcs. And yeah, you could argue that their character arcs were a complicated mess, but at least they had the opportunity to have their characters explored, you know? They had the spotlight and different aspects of their characters were looked at and explored and while I'm not a huge fan of how they turned out. Uh, I wouldn't say that they were done dirty because at least they were given a chance. And of course, we have to talk about Boba Fett. Boba Fett is, it's kind of crazy how he's such a fan favorite. Like, for so long after the OT came out and throughout the prequels, everyone loves Boba Fett. Like, Jen Fett was awesome. He's my favorite between the two, but he doesn't even come close to receiving the adoration that Boba Fett got. And Boba Fett didn't even do very much in the original trilogy. It's kind of an ongoing joke about how he, he didn't do much. He didn't have a lot of lines. He was just really cool. And at the time, he was super badass. He had a jetpack, he had a flamethrower, and, and, a, and a missile, and all these cool things. He was a bounty hunter hired by Darth Vader. Like, can it get more badass than that? And the only thing that kind of sucks about his character was just that he died too soon. I think that everyone will agree with me on this, that uh, it sucked the way that he died. It ended up kind of being written off as a bit of a joke, you know, ends up in the Sarlacc pit and then it gives a nice belch after it's done eating him. But I mean, I'm not upset about it. I'm not salty about the fact that he died and he didn't get a ton of screen time because he served the purpose that George Lucas wanted for him, right? Like everything that George Lucas has written has 
been pretty good so far. He was very good at storytelling, which is why we all love the original first six movies. So we can't really call it a mistake or anything like that because that, that, that this was just Boba Fett's story. Maybe he wasn't supposed to have a super heroic timeline because he, he that's what he was. He was a, a bounty hunter. I mean, he worked with Jabba the Hutt and he hung out in kind of scummy places. He didn't have a very nice lifestyle or probably very good motivations for doing anything. I mean, the Boba Fett in his universe was probably a bit of a dick. So, I don't know. Maybe he gets too much glory for the person that he really was. But then again, we don't really know who he truly was. So, this is all speculation. And I know in Legends, Boba Fett escapes. And now they're going to be including Boba Fett in The Mandalorian, which is, like, super exciting and makes me wonder if I should even include Boba Fett in this list because they're going to bring him back and hopefully do justice to him like they did with Darth Maul. You know, Darth Maul died out super early, but then they supported his character further in the Clone Wars and then in, eventually in Rogue One. And it's very exciting to see that Boba Fett is maybe going to be getting the, the spotlight again. And uh, hopefully I can look back on this video and regret including him in this list. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this video. Who do you think was done dirty in the Star Wars universe? Have a great day. May the Force be with you.